though. Please stand for the lighting of the altar candles. so it'll be nice and fresh. Mashed potatoes, carrots, coleslaw, rolls, dessert, and a beverage. Adults, 13 and up, 10 bucks. Youth, seven to 12, eight bucks. Six and under are free. Now, um, we would like to have the tickets sold so we don't have to do anything at the door. So if there's anything left over, we will sell them at the door, but this is gonna be good. So you're taking your chances if you wait till the day of. The SOS is putting on this uh, dinner, and we have tickets and have planned on 100 people. Okay, now there is a sign up out there for desserts, and also for people that want to help. And I just want to warn you, the SOS group has a really good time when we do anything like this. We have, we have fun. So one of us will be out in the Narthex selling tickets, after uh, fellow, after worship, uh, and if I'm the one that's doing it, I'll be in the fellowship hall having brownies and coffee. Okay. I love brownies. You brought brownies? No, I said I love them. Me too. Good morning, I'm Maddie, I'm the Children's Church Director, um, and I'm here to announce our next event for Children's Church. We're having our Trunk or Treat event again this year. It was a huge success last year, and kids had so much fun. So I'm looking forward to it again this year. It's going to be on October 26th, it's on a Saturday. It'll be from <clears throat> 1 to 3, and uh, weather pending. It should be outside. If it rained again, if it rains again like it did last year, we'll have it inside again. But either way, it's going to be a blast. So if you would like to sign up, there will be a sign-up sheet out in the Narthex after Children's Church today. You can sign up there. Thank you. Before you leave, before, before you leave, Mari, please return. Um, I'd like the congregation to join me in congratulating Mari. She's um, a new teacher. Um, she has a special... A self-contained um, classroom, special education teacher in the Phoenix School District. And one of them. Yeah. is fresh from Casabasco, uh, where she spent the summer um, um, involved in camp as a counselor. Um, she's a, a master student at the Oswego University, our children's director. And um, I, I'm encouraging you to give her as much support as possible. Um, today, we're going to have a meeting right after worship. We'll meet right in here. And Maddie's going to share some of the plans that she has for children's work in this congregation. And we'll have some other individuals present. And if you wish to stay for that meeting, you may do so. 
as we um, plan for our children and our youth for this year. Thank you so much, Maddie. Good morning, my name is Dan. I'm coming to today as the AV coordinator. I'm looking for volunteers to help back at the AV table. And what I'm looking for is for a real simple job. All I need is somebody to run the PowerPoint for me. All you do is hit one button, and it just proceeds the slide to the next slide. I'm looking for volunteers. I'm not looking for every week. I'm just looking for people that are, will be willing to do that so I can come up to them and say, would you be able to do this if I'm back there by myself? That way I can run the other equipment and I have to worry about the PowerPoint. So if you're interested, please see me back at the AV table. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Al Mosier, and um, the Pennellville Cantata Group. Every year they put on a cantata at Christmas time, and they begin practice at 6 o'clock on the 29th of September. And we'd be pleased to have all of you come out. Also, um, our choir, we could use some new basses. And any members, and we're so happy to have Emily here, and you'd have a great time. So please join the choir, Pat. Thank you. Of course, I join in saying welcome to all of you. And to add to what I said earlier, on Tuesday the 17th, we're hosting a sexual harassment seminar workshop here. It's especially for our staff members, our employees, but I think we can open it up to other interested persons. It's being um, organized by our, our district, um, but we are hosting it from 6.30 to 8.30 on Tuesday, and if you're interested, please join us for that training or that workshop. And then on the 29th of this month, the last Sunday of September, we are gonna be doing a special appeal for um, those who are affected by Hurricane Dorian. And we'd like you to prepare for that and to be as generous as possible in your contributions. The 29th of September, that will be our um, special drive, special appeal from this congregation for the Hurricane Dorian um, persons who were affected by that hurricane. And now I welcome... Um <laughs> Please be seated. 
Join us in prayer. Dear Lord, we praise your holy name, for you are an awesome God. We thank you today for the privilege of coming together to worship you. We thank you for this day and for bringing the Niles family safely back to us. We thank you for our health and well-being and pray for those uh, for your healing hand on those who are sick and or suffering. We ask for your blessing on each of us today and in the week ahead. We ask you that you help us remain mindful of those less fortunate than ourselves and all those recovering from loss from Hurricane Dorian and other disasters and tragedies and give them strength to pick up the pieces and move forward. Help us spread your love to all those we come in contact with. Lord, we ask for your blessing on Pastor Niles. Give his message strength. Open our ears to hear your word, to understand and carry it with us in the days to come. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to apologize to 
Pastor Niles and Jacket because I kind of stepped on their toes with trying to teach you a new song. And um, I apologize. It just shows that I'll, each and every one of us can make mistakes. Not me. I never do. <laughs> Change is good. At this time, we would like to give back to the Lord from our bounty. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you have given us and ask your blessing on these gifts as we give back to you from our bounty. We pray that these gifts will enhance your kingdom, aid those in need, and help all to understand how awesome you are. Continue to show us you are true to your promise that the more we give, the more we shall receive. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. How many of you are in school? <laughs> Sorry about that. I asked them how many were in school. How many of you like school? Uh, that was kind of hesitant there. <laughs> do you not like school? Oh, do you have your hand up? Okay, I didn't see your hand. That's wonderful. I'm glad you like school. I wonder, are you, do you feel like you're different than other kids in their school, or are you pretty much the same? You feel like you're the same, or are you different? Huh? Hi. You were having lots of fun up here. I saw you dancing around. I love that, that enthusiasm. Well, I'm here to tell you, I was hoping Rich would be here today to show you that it's okay to be different. So Pastor, <laughs> can, can, you, can you be rich and hold up his sign for us? <laughs> so this is the sign that Rich, he stands in the back and he holds that up for us to see that are up in front so we can see that. So that's the sign that we're always referring to. But even though Rich loves snow and wants it to snow, we still love him. And so does God, even though he's different. And it's the same with Jesus. Jesus was different. He didn't follow the crowd. He didn't follow what the Pharisees were teaching. He, thought, he went and did what was right. And by doing what was right, people started following him because he loved unconditionally. He loved people as they were. He forgave their sins and then told them to go and sin no more. So it's okay to be different. I love it. <laughs> but it's okay to be different as long as you do what's right and you follow the teachings of Jesus. Okay? We love you all. Jesus loves you all. And he wants you to be yourselves, to not follow the crowd, but do what is right. Okay? Pastor Nice, what would you like to give them their blessing? And I was just showing them how snow can mean no snow. <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray. Oh, loving God, we thank you for our children. Thank you for their homes, for their parents, their guardians, and all who have the care of them. Thank you, Lord, for those who care for our children when they come to church. We give you thanks for today's message, reminding them and all of us that we are different and that you love us, oh God, even with our differences. We ask you to bless our children as they go to school and as they go through life. We pray that they will grow up to be your faithful soldiers and servants all the days of their life. 
watch over them, protect them, and keep them from the evil one, and grant them that sense of your presence now and always for Christ's sake. Amen. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our refuge. Amen. I'd like to extend special greetings to my colleague, Reverend um, Vivian Somerville. Good to see you there. I usually look across there for you, but it's nice to have you in the congregation. And, and thanks to you and all the others for filling in during my absence. I'd also like to say welcome to my father and my sister in Miami. Um, nice to have them worshiping with us today from that distance. And welcome to all who are visiting today. Very pleased to have you among us. Our reflection for today is, there is no God. There is no God. That's our theme. And our text comes from the psalm we just read, Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Today's psalm falls in the first division of the Psalter. It is one of those attributed to David, like last week's psalm. Interestingly, there is another psalm, 53, that is nearly identical to our psalm for reflection, Psalm 14. Both psalms open with the words, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Today's psalm, and its nearly identical writing highlight one position that some individuals take when it comes to God. It is to say, there is no God. The psalm, for our reflection, states that it is the fool that says there is no God. Of course, you need to understand that fool, as it is used in this context, doesn't mean to lack intelligence or to have low IQ. It has nothing to do with that. It is not questioning the intelligence or the, the IQ of those who might say there is no God. In fact, there are some very learned and talented individuals who have said there is no God. For example, I read about Professor Stephen Hawking, physicist and author, one of Britain's finest minds, an esteemed scholar who died after a lifelong battle with motor neuron disease. He said, and I quote, do I have faith? We are each free to believe what we want. And it's my view that the simplest explanation is that there is no God. End of quote. The professor was regarded as the British scientific hero. When the Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God, it is not to say that those who think like that are lacking in intelligence, as we have just seen. Another way of thinking about the text is to say that it is not wise for people to say 
There is no God. Wisdom, you see, is a quality that the Bible praises. We find the word wisdom occurring in the Bible over and over. And wisdom is a quality that goes beyond mere intellectual enlightenment. In the opening chapter of the book of Proverbs, for, for example, and, and, and the book of Proverbs is found in what we call the wisdom literature of the Bible. In that opening chapter of Proverbs, we find wisdom's beginning, or we read of wisdom's beginning and its call. The writer declares there, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge or wisdom. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Wisdom and folly are often contrasted in the Bible. In the conclusion of his teaching in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus speaks of the wise and foolish builders. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. The wise build on rock and the foolish on sand. Illustrating to his hearers that those who hear his words and do them are like wise builders. And those who reject his words are like the foolish who build on sand. The house built on rock will withstand the elements while the one built on sand will fall. In other words, Jesus was saying it is wise to listen and obey, listen to and obey his words. Because the life that is built on his words, on his teaching, is a life that will stand and not perish. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. What we are being reminded of in today's text is the folly of denying and rejecting God. Indeed, it is the height of folly to do so, to reject God. It is wise to accept God and, and recognize that God is. The story is told of a man who went to a barber shop to have his hair and his beard cut, as always. He started to have a good conversation with the barber who attended him. They talked about many things and various subjects. Suddenly, they began to talk about God. The barber said, look man, I don't believe that God exists as you say. Why do you say that, asked the client. Well, it's easy. You just have to go out in the street to realize that God does not exist. Oh, tell me, if God existed, would there be so many sick people? Would there be abandoned children? If God existed, there would be no suffering, no pain. I can't think of a loving God who permits all of these things. The client stopped for a moment thinking, but he didn't want to respond so as to cause an argument. An argument. And it's always careful. You, you must always be careful about those who might be cutting your hair <laughs> or attending to your hair what you say to them. So the barber finished his job and the client went out of the shop. Just after he left the barber shop, he saw a man in the street with long hair and a long beard. He again entered the barber shop and he said to the barber, you know what? Barbers do not exist. How can you say they don't exist? Asked the barber. I am here and I am a barber. No, the client exclaimed, 
They don't exist because if they did, how come you would have people here with long hair and a beard like that man who walks in the street? Ah, barbers do exist. What happens is that people do not come to me. Exactly, affirmed the client. That's the point. God does exist. What happens is that people don't go to him and, and do not look for him. That's why there's so much pain and suffering in the world. That's the story. And I believe there's some things we can learn from it and some ways in which we can argue with that story. But the client wanted to prove to the barber that there is a God. Now, what are some of the ways we acknowledge God? If we are not going to take the way of the fool who says there is no God, then how do we acknowledge that God is? And I say one way is in our practice of worship and prayer. One way that we say, yes, God, and no God, uh, instead of no God, is in our worship and our prayer time. Through worship, we acknowledge that God is. There is a God. We acknowledge God's sovereignty and power. And in prayer, we open a line of communication with God and show our willingness to listen to God, to listen to God's word, to listen to what God is saying to us and align our will with God's. As you know, we are from the island of Anguilla in the Caribbean. And, and recently, there have been some terrible crimes on our small island. It's very different from what it was like when we were growing up there. Crimes, murders were few and far between. And whenever one occurred, we would be shocked by the news. But recently, there have been some murders there. And I've heard prominent persons on the island calling for people to return to God, to return to the way of God, to go back to church, because it is their belief that some of these negative things and some of these crimes are the result of people turning away from God and following the way of evil. So when we gather for worship and when we pray, we are acknowledging that God is, that there is some being that is greater than us, that is some being whose spirit can guide us to moral righteousness and doing those things that will help to make our communities and our world better. The other way that we acknowledge God is in the pursuit of our plans. This is another area where we can acknowledge that God is. I'm reminded of the parable of the rich fool found in the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 12, 16 to 21, a story that Jesus told to illustrate the folly of thinking that wealth or materialism can guarantee eternal security. In the parable, the man's fields had produced an abundant harvest, and he made plans for expansion, imagining himself living in comfort and ease for a long time. 
And as you read the parable, as, as the parable is told, it becomes obvious that all his planning was centered around himself. Never once does a man refer to God. This man was foolish. He's called a fool in the parable because he left God out of his plans. He never aligned himself and his pursuits with God. He acted as though there is no God. And whenever we are pursuing anything, our education, um, our business, whatever it is that we might be pursuing, if we fail to acknowledge God and what God is able to do to help us along the way, that can be folly. That can be like a fool who says, there is no God. Finally, my friends, we acknowledge that God is in our attitude to other people. This is another area where we can show that we believe that there is a God. The way we treat others is a reflection of our belief in God as creator. If we say there is a God, this will be the basis for acting justly and lovingly to others. If we believe that God is and that God created us and all humankind, then we will believe in the sanctity of life. We will believe in respecting and honoring others. We will be careful what we say about other people and how we treat other people because we recognize that they are God's creatures as we are all God's creatures. And we want to value and honor them because they are the people of God. We will not, like the psalmist says in our psalm for today, devour people as though eating bread. Psalm 14, verse 4. We will avoid all forms of evil towards others. If we say, yes, God is, then we will do all we can to honor God's creatures and God's creation. So my sisters and brothers, let us then be like the wise who acknowledge that God is. And I like the words on our board out front. Thank you so much, Sister Karen O'Brien, for those lovely words that remind us that autumn leaves, God does not. Yes, when everything about us changes, God is and God will ever be. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
is, they would say, why not give an applause to our God, who is an awesome God? Let us give an Our awesome God, receive the blessing. In your name, Lord God, we go forth in your strength to be strong, in your wisdom to be wise, in your grace to find our sufficiency, in your Holy Spirit to abide in love, joy, and peace. Thine is the kingdom, O God, the power and the glory forever and ever. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us all this day and always. Amen. Amen.